Today we're going to bring you five facts about the great grey owl. Absolutely stunning owl. And Joe Askew has kindly offered to bring her little baby along, Galileo, a great grey owl, who's hopefully going to let you see some of these facts, not just hear about them. So first off, Joe, this owl is absolutely immense and I know you fly huge owls such as milk eagle owls from Africa and I know you fly European eagle owls and I think this owl is longer and bigger looking than all of those owls. Definitely. Is it though? Is it though? Definitely much longer. She's the tallest owl in the world from tip of her tail to the top of her head. They are the tallest. Um, but they're certainly not the largest owl in terms of weight. She only weighs in at about two pound three ounces. I like to think of her a bit like a flying duvet. She's all <laughs> fluff really. Um, very little of her in there. So most of what I'm looking at is feathers then, not yeah, actually yeah, the, the meaty, muscly bird. Feather tiny little bird in there really. Yeah. So she weighs that weight. As a comparison then, something that I think looks the same size, what does your European eagle owl weigh when it's flying, Joe? Our female um, European eagle owl. So I've got to cut in there. Is Galileo a male or a female? It sounds like a yeah. male's name to me. It is a male name, unfortunately. Um, but we thought she was male when we had her, but in fact she's female. Okay, but okay. But she so. knows her name, so we're not going to change it. Okay, but that's a comparable size, because most of us know yep. female so birds female. are probably bigger than male, so this is a female Great grey owl, weighing, tell us again, I've forgotten. Two pound three. Two pound three. And your female European eagle owl that you and Emily fly here? Just under five pounds. Wow. So, so huge, huge difference. So, so much she's much half bigger. the owl, yeah. really. She's, now, she's more or less not much bigger than a bag of sugar, is she? Really? That's amazing. Now, she looks big, so I think this animal could, I don't know, maybe could catch a fox or a deer for its tea, Joe. What kind of thing would you say it could catch then? Mainly well. in the wild it would be voles and lemmings. Wow, so something like a hamster size. So yeah, what yeah, would Luna, the European eagle owl, catch then? Oh, she can catch much, much bigger prey. Fox size, even uh, monk jack deer possibly. So young monk jack deer up to that yeah. size and rabbits no problem at all and yeah. other birds of prey. So wow, so this owl, biggest owl in the world, from a, a falconer and a, a bird of prey trainer, it's only big on looks then. Definitely, absolutely. She's one of our most popular birds. She's stunning looking. You've told us that really her favourite food is small mammals and if you're a vole or a lemming, your body really is quite a cylindrical shape. You're kind of like a loo roll with the fur and legs, aren't you, that shape. So how does she sort of catch them easily? Has she got any adaptations to catch something that's sort of cylindrical and squirmy and flurry like that? She certainly has. She's got special feet designed for this because she catches cylindrical prey. She has her talons in a special arrangement so that um, she has two forward and two back basically. The side one can flip forward and back a bit more so that she can hold on to her cylindrical prey easily and not lose it. Oh, okay, so sorry to get So my eagles, my, I know we've been looking at Zeus the golden eagle and Wurzel the bald eagle. They've got three toes pointed forward like most birds and a, and a back toe, a hallux if you like at the back so this owl can flick one of the three around to the side is that right is that what yeah, you mean yeah more or less towards the back so and there's a great name for that fantastic word zygodactyl crikey kids at home if you want to learn how to spell that you carry on <laughs> so it gives a uh, two facing forward two talons at the back a much better way of gripping some little furry body like that then yeah definitely zygodactyl Camouflage is definitely one. They're built absolutely perfectly. If you think she comes from areas of the world, for instance, Scandinavia, where they have um, lots of silver birch trees. If you sat her in a silver birch tree, in front of the trunk particularly, she would just disappear totally. And that's the trunk, and I've got to say, I mean, I think what we've got there, we've got a conker tree, so nothing yeah. like her, but again, even though that broken camouflage pattern, even in that tree that's not natural for her, she vanishes away, doesn't she? Yeah, if you take your eyes off her and look back, you struggle to find her again. A 
she's got a superpower, hasn't she, this girl? Oh, a, super, a real superpower. Absolutely super hearing. And that's why she has this enormous face here. This facial disc um, is made to collect all the sound and channel it into her ears. So it's a bit like a funnel, really. Channels it into those ears and her ears are sort of where you'd expect them to be alongside her eyes um, on the skull there. But one is a little bit larger and higher than the other. So that the sound hits one ear before the other. And then she can work out by a quick triangulation calculation where the prey is without ever having seen it. Now, in the wild, these guys would like, clutch maybe three or four youngsters and they're looked after their owlets, like all those, their owlets. And they only take, don't they, about eight, eight to ten weeks to be really more or less fully grown. Birds of prey of all kinds, they grow really fast. But this owl didn't really spend the first few weeks of its life in a tree in the taiga forest of northern Europe. This is a hand-reared, or rather a captive bred hand-reared owl. How old was she? when you got her? I had her from two weeks old, so she was a tiny chick, um, very wow. reliant on me. So was she exactly like this, just smaller, and she just grew bigger, or what she was, was she like? She was really ugly as a chick. <laughs> oh, oh God, and she's got good hearing, that's really cruel, she can hear you saying that. No. She had a huge big beak, and was just a grey blob, really. Where does she live? Did you make a nest for her in a tree near your house and kind of feed her or you know where on earth did she live if you had her from a tiny owlet she stayed with me 24 7. really so she was in her plastic big storage tub because she couldn't fly so if i wanted to keep her safe she was in there the rest of the time she was wandering around the house she couldn't fly at that point so she'd wander around the floor 